Hey there, Oz. Hey, Curtis. Hey, what movie are we watching this week? This week, we're watching the combination of Mrs. Doubtfire <laughs> yeah. meets Mean Girls. All right. Crossed with a bug's life. <laughs> and all wrapped up with the boy who could fly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> this week, we're talking about Uncle Buck. <laughs> So are we now in that position where we have to do uh, the boy who could fly every week this month? <laughs> uh, I, it might be a stretch the rest of the month, but with your reference to it last week, of course, Jay Underwood, who plays the bug character, <laughs> is the boy who could fly from that movie. Uh, so it was just a natural fit. And then I knew the comedy was there when you yeah. <laughs> threw it in last week. So I've never actually seen the boy who could fly. Um, it's bad. It's it it's got a it's got a great cast all things considered but yeah it's let's see the cast it's it's written and directed by michael myers himself nick castle <laughs> it's got a, a lot it's got a 6.6 .6 on imdb yeah um bonnie I, I, bedelia fred savage fred gwynn oh, fred um gwynn. jason Priestley. so it's like it, I, that's I say a, great. a pretty yeah, solid. I won't. I mean, I said great cast earlier, but that's a stretch, probably. Um, <laughs> I actually, I've never seen it. The reason I included it last week, uh, Patreon subscriber Melissa L. Uh, it was one of those kind of formative movies. Like she had told me that, mm -hmm. like uh, her her grandparents, she had a set of grandparents who lived in, um, oh God, not Hinsdale, uh, not Westchester. Oh, I'm blanking on the town, but in like kind of the near west suburbs there, uh -huh. and. Um, and so, like, she and her grandma would go to the video store, and she would always rent that movie. Yeah, I remember seeing it a handful of times. Mm -hmm. An autistic boy who dreams of flying touches everyone he meets, which is a big red flag. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> shouldn't touch everyone. Like, literally no. touch everyone you meet. <laughs> uh, including a new family who's moved in after their father dies. So that's where you're, you're Lucy Deacons. Mm -hmm. she, she's, <laughs> she's the autistic boy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but no it's it's not a it's not a bad film per se i know i said it's bad but it's it's one of those that it's made right there in the heart of the 80s yeah so it's got that stamp all over sure, it sure it is um, 80s as 80s could be yeah and also at a time when we probably we knew let's put it this way we knew as much about autism as we did from rain man sure yeah, the, the, this is what autism is. And I, yeah. Ironically, we, we're going to put autism into this box, and, right. and you must check these boxes for these yes. series of traits. Yeah, because yeah. we don't know enough about it other than other than they're quote unquote weird. Yeah, they're, they're weird, mm -hmm. uh, and so um, that's where it's at. But yeah, Fred Savage's film debut, written and directed by Nick Castle. <laughs> so it's an interesting it combination. When you dropped a boy who could fly in last week, I figure <laughs> that's a perfect fit for this week. Yeah. And, uh, I had no course, idea that Bug was in that movie. Yeah, he was the <laughs> he was the aforementioned boy who could fly. Okay. Um, and Mrs. Doubtfire is like, what other movie can you think of that has a family member you don't want watching your teenage daughter and younger brother and sister? Yep. There you so, go. Uh, welcome back, listeners and viewers, to another week of Let's Talk About Flicks, the podcast where we take a monthly theme. This being Candyland, John Candy oh, Month. Um, love this it, month. It is. It's been a. It's been a. It's. How could it be a bad month? I, I mean, know, right? It's just it's just a, a month full of rainbows and sunshine. Because even his lesser films are still John Candy movies. Like yes. the guy just brings it all the time. Yeah, and it's he's just there. there I, just he has that sort of natural charisma. Mm -hmm, he does. Yeah. He does. And so, uh, I'm one of your hosts, Oz. I'm the other host, Curtis. And before we get rolling out, mm -hmm. we want to give a shout out to our Patreon subscribers: Don S, Aaron A, Mady K, Melissa L, and Colin K. Thank you again for your patronage. Thank you, one in five. Uncle Buck is a movie that <laughs> we watch because uh, it's not a lot around like the holiday season for some yes. reason. Um, and we, it's when it's on, we watch it here. It's Uncle Buck is to us a lot like Great Outdoors is to you guys yeah. when you're up when sure. you're up north. And so it's just a movie that no matter what part of the movie is on, you could put it on and and just be just, fine. Yeah, just right. It's 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 definitely, you know, when you're flipping the channels, it 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 brings that that flipping to a halt. Yeah, and you know, and again, it doesn't matter what scene it is, you know it's Uncle Buck. Yeah. Like, you know, there's <laughs> there's just 
every scene in the movie is like, oh, that's Uncle Buck. So, well, it's rare that John Candy's not on on screen. Also, yeah, that's true. And when he's not, it's Miles and Maisie stealing every scene that they're in. Yeah. So, <laughs> or <laughs> or, or uh, um, oh, what's the or the walleye vision view of of Marcy? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that was, God, that's a fun scene. I got a feeling that'll uh, come up yeah, later. Yeah. So uh, it is my movie this week. Yes. So you've got the cast. Yeah. So we'll start with again as as in, is uh, and again, giving a sneak preview for one of the remaining movies this month. Three of the four movies in Candyland month uh, involves John Hughes. This one was both written and directed by John Hughes. Yes. Yeah. Just really knew how to use candy so well. Yes. Very well. And speaking of, I think, yeah, go I ahead. don't think anybody ever struggled with John Candy. Like he just seems like, you know, that, like he just he's going to deliver no matter what. Yeah. But yeah, he and John Hughes worked very well together. Mm-hmm. So we have John, the aforementioned John Candy, as Buck Russell, aka Uncle Buck. Uh, he's a bachelor who is called upon uh, in an emergency situation to babysit his brother's three children. Those three children are Jean Louise, uh, Louisa Kelly as Tia Russell, the oldest daughter. I think she's 15 in the movie. Mm-hmm. Gabby Hoffman as Maisie, the youngest. She's six. And a pre-Home Alone Macaulay Culkin as yeah. the eight-year-old kind of kind of know-it-all Miles. Yes. Very sarcastic kid. Yes. Uh, we have Buck's uh, gir- girlfriend, we'll say. Yeah. Kind Eight of, years they've been together. Yeah. Uh, Shanice Koblowski, a great yeah. Chicago, <laughs> Chicago name, Koblowski. <laughs> Shanice Koblowski from <laughs> Koblowski Tires. <laughs> uh, played by Amy Madigan. Uh, again, girlfriend and proprietor of a tire shop. Uh, we have the parents. So uh, Buck's brother, Bob, played by Garrett M. Brown. And then his spouse, Cindy, played by Elaine Bromka. A uh, couple other people I'm, I'll mention here as well. We got the the neighbor across the street, uh, Marcy <laughs> Dahlgren Frost. Yes, <laughs> played she's, by she's single. Yes, but she she kept the frost. Yes, she kept the frost. She gets uh, compliments on the hyphen. <laughs> <laughs> played by Lori Metcalf. Oh, uh, well played by Lori Metcalf. Uh, we've got you mentioned before Jay Underwood as Tia's. Uh, we'll say boy boyfriend yeah. bug. I love the bug's life. In the, yes. <laughs> that, that got me going. And and I'll mention one more. We have Mike Starr mm-hmm. as yeah. Pooter the Cloud, a, a a guy, a character who does kids' birthdays parties, and a uh, first time on screen uh, viewing of Anna Klumsky. I saw that as well. You know, she's like yeah. a kid in the classroom or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, she's like chewing her thumbnail when uh, when Maisie is. She drops the GD in class, which is, I feel like this movie is a transition of of John Hughes mm-hmm. filmmaking. I really feel there's bits of this movie that are like earlier 80s John Hughes-esque, just kind of over, like not really in a sequence. And this, this scene, this little one, we'll get to it later, you know, a little bit more detail when, when um, Candy goes to meet with, the assistant principal and we cut to Maisie in class and she says, you know, the GD mm-hmm. you know, term. And then the teacher's like, blasphemer. Yeah, it's like, blasphemy. That, that, that feels like early John Hughes, mm-hmm. like some of his John Cusack movie kind of stuff. Like that's what that feels like. Um, and then, and then of course that he segues into working more with younger kids as opposed yeah. to teenagers. And so it's just, it's that weird kind of, it's funny, but it's also like, boy, that, that doesn't really fit the tone of this film. But it's John Hughes just throwing some yeah. nonsense in there. So, mm-hmm. All right. So, hey, those are the characters, Oz. What do we got for the plot of Uncle um, Buck? Movie kicks off with with uh, back and forth um, camera work here. We, mm-hmm. we're, we jump back and forth between what Buck is doing and what's going on with his brother, and his family in the suburbs. Um, Buck is sitting with Shanice. They're at a bar or they're out to dinner or something. And Shanice is like, I want you to come work for me. Mm-hmm. I, I want, you know, like she loves him. She's very devoted to Buck. I want you to come work for me. 
It's been eight years, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We, everything we learn about their relationship, we learn right here. Yeah, we, we get a kind of a quick little exposition dump. Yeah, in this like opening, the pre-title sequence of, look, we've been together eight years. Buck is resistant. I don't like the idea of working for my girlfriend. I don't like the idea of being tied down. I, I want to be able to throw my golf clubs in the car, just go whatever I want, like yada, yada, he, he yada. He wants to live life in the moment, in every yeah. moment. And when yeah. it's convenient for him, then yeah. I mean, he does love Shanice. Yeah, but... exactly. And that and that's – I get to this a little bit later too. That's the one thing that's, that's tough to stomach with Uncle Buck is mm-hmm. because it's John Candy behind it. It's like, like even when he's telling you, I don't want – to be tied down in a serious relationship, it's still John Candy saying those yeah, words. Yeah, the, the charm, just the charm yeah. that he emits. But so he's, like, he's really a selfish guy. Very selfish. He's a very selfish guy. And so, um, you know, what we're running into here with Shanice is she's just basically, it's, what, it's you know, the crap or get off the pot. Buck. Yeah, like, it's been what eight are we gonna years. Do? Yeah. <laughs> I said it in the exposition a moment ago. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and so, and he's like, okay, fine, fine, fine. I'll come work for you. You know, tomorrow. Yeah. And it's it's almost like, kind of pouty about it. Yeah. I'll be there tomorrow. And she's like, you better not come up with any, re- any you know, excuses uh-huh. why you can't. And he's like, trust me, if I could think of one, I'd give it to you. Yeah. You know, like he's just telling her, like, basically, I submit to what you want. Yeah. I don't want it, but I will give in to you because I love you. Yeah. But you get the idea. This has kind of happened before because she's like, yes. you better not come up with any excuses. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's like. She, she's time, trying to call like, his bluff before before yeah. he presents the bluff. It's like and Shinny's cut it loose. Like yeah, yeah, <laughs> cut him loose. Um, meanwhile, this is you know counter shot with what's going on with Bob and Cindy as the kids are the kids. Like mm-hmm. we get a little taste of of Tia, Miles, and Maisie, um, and then you know we get Bob and Cindy. It's 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 just a stressful home life. Yeah. Um, Cindy asks Miles, like, how's soccer going? And Bob's like, he quit like weeks ago. You know, like, it's just this, it's really hard to put your thumb on it too. Cause like you, you get this vibe coming off that this is like this perfect nuclear family. They live in the suburbs, they make a lot of money, they mm-hmm. take care of their kids or whatever. But the toxicity is on display when no yeah. one else is around. Yeah, well said. It's you know there there's there's a distance um, you know amongst all of the family members here. Like you see Tia getting the kids ready for school mm-hmm. a couple of times. Yeah, you know the the parents are are very career driven and yes. you know are all about. You get the impression you know are you know really trying to to provide as much income as they can make as yeah. much money and they're also not too far removed from from moving from Indianapolis and, yes yes and leaving most of the rest of the family buck notwithstanding there right and so it's it's tricky because it's just like they're just so emotionally absent in yeah. the kids lives and which of course you and I know as parents that's the currency that kids need more than anything is yeah. the emotional like mm-hmm. if you love your kids they don't my our kids don't know how much money we make you know like mm-hmm. my kids don't know what my salary is or like they wouldn't have any idea what a good salary is every other um, week i sit down with with my nine-year-old <laughs> and i got i got her one of those those transparent green visors i, I good, good yeah good call yeah, yeah. And, and and a and a, and a printable calculator and smart and we just we go over all the income every two weeks she every time a check comes in every she, time well yep. if she's gonna learn the finances no better time than now yeah she co-signs on most of our <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> most of our bills right uh and so um <laughs> you know they get a phone call that cindy's dad had a heart attack um yeah, back in indianapolis back in indianapolis <laughs> and because they 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 don't know anybody really. Yeah, yet they're they're new the to town. You know, newish to town. That that's kind of tough. It's like you know they moved, but we don't really know how long they've been gone. So, plus, just like the kids aren't going to have any real friends close enough that you call on the parents. Yeah. Tia is just a monster. I get the impression um, you're probably about like six ish months. That's kind yeah, of yeah, because it it hasn't been super long, but they've been there long enough that like they know how to get to school, like they've right. got the routines down. Well, and and what's always seems to be an indicator in Hollywood, there's no there's no packed boxes laying around the house. Yeah. <laughs> so they've they've at least unpacked sure. which 
Uh, it's kind of a trope, I think, that filmmakers like to use to show you they haven't been there long is things they're still in boxes. Uh, <laughs> and so, but they're like, well, we got to go. We've got to go to Indianapolis now. We've got to get back. Um, but of course, the kids have their own life. They've got mm-hmm. school. We can't just pull them out for this. So what are we going to do? Uh, well, we can ask these people. Well, no, they're on vacation. We can yeah. ask. We can ask Marcy across the street to where Cindy's like, she's the last person I would ask. Yeah. Which is comical because that just shows their, like, Cindy's, like, support bubble. And how many, like, by saying Marcy's the last person I would ask, she's already eliminated so many other people from maybe, like, she's the last person within my bubble that I would yeah. ask. Yeah, you get you get the impression Cindy's got some struggles. Yes, yes. Um, and so Bob's like, well, what about Buck? Just like, like your brother, <laughs> almost, almost <laughs> like I, I just told you that, you know, if Marcy was going to be the last person I asked, like almost Bob's like, Oh good. Well then Buck would be above her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't not mention Buck. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah, your brother He's like, yeah, you know, it's, it's okay. You know, it'll be fine. Which Cindy, Cindy, like the actress does a great job of showing how she feels about Buck without ever saying how she feels. about Buck. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, her body, uh, her just, body language, yeah. and, and just facial features. Yeah, she does yeah. a good job selling the, the uh, like, I'll oh say doubt in, yes, in Buck. Like, <laughs> like we're here, which of course she almost feels like she has to because Bob is like, let's. He's a great guy. You yeah. know, we could do it. And so call Bob or Bob calls Buck. You know, Buck is is home. You know, he's sleeping. And hey, <laughs> who? Yeah, <laughs> it's Bob, your brother. Oh, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So quickly goes over, hey, Cindy's Cindy's dad had a heart attack. We've got to go to Indianapolis. Can you watch the kids? Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. I got some peanut butter. Like, let's basically send them on into the city. I got them. Yeah. You know, so uh, why don't you come out to us? Oh, oh, okay. Well, of course, this all coincides with this was the evening that he and Shanice had just, uh-huh. I'll be there in the morning. I'll be there in the morning. Yeah. I, like, if I could come up with something. Yeah. I would. Yep. Well, and he did. <laughs> <clears throat> More like something came up. Yeah. For Buck. So he calls Shanice. You know, we get a fun little. Yeah, but no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just he can't get a word yeah, in edgewise. She, a literal word in edgewise. She's just ripping him apart. Um, we only hear his side of it. Yeah. Or you know his end of it anyway. And so he gets in his car. He drives into the suburbs. Um, you know, Bob tells Cindy he, he'll do it. And it's just like, oh God. And Cindy's it's like, like, okay. And he's like, yeah. hey, you know, he was he was sleeping. That's something. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't awake at three in the morning. Um, and so, uh, you know, Buck, and it's just now we get <clears throat> the like avalanche of, of Buck. Like yeah. he pulls in, he's got this really run down car that's loud and smoky backfires and, backfires yeah. and um, <laughs> that car pull- kind of is a character in the movie too it is very much so uh you know pulls in front of what appears to be the neighbor across the street because buck's like yeah i know where you live yeah you know, t- to his fairness the houses do look very similar and he was right across the street literally right? across the street but still it wasn't the right home <laughs> no it's pounding, hey, Bobby! <laughs> pounding <on> the door. <laughs> which then bob's yelling from the porch across the street which, which then Buck thinks that he's yelling from inside the house, yeah. so he keeps yelling louder. So, yeah, he gets louder. <laughs> and so, uh, but he comes over, and this is the first of a... It, it doesn't surprise me with their parenting style, but it does surprise me because it's me. All of this phone call and all of this plan making has been done with the kids asleep. Yeah. They, like, Bob and Cindy didn't even... Didn't tell any of the kids. Like, Tia was aware, but didn't say anything to Miles and Maisie about we're going to be leaving. Yeah. You know, it's like the kids went to bed and when they get up, their parents are gone. Yeah. Tia, Tia is awake for part of it, as you said, and yeah. you get an indication pretty early of just how nasty things are oh, between she's Tia, awful. Tia and Cindy. Yeah. At one point, Tia, Tia calls out Cindy, like for moving away yeah. from Indianapolis and from the family. And she, and she says, if my whole family moved away from me, I'd have a heart attack too. Right. Like, it's ooh, like, ooh, yeah, it's like, it's, it's, so really, I mean, at its core, what we get in this movie, you know, thematically is the, is just a battle of selfish wills yeah. between Buck and Tia. Yeah. Um, Cause again, like 
dude, grandpa just had a heart attack. And instead of being upset about it, you take a shot at your mom. Yeah. You're going to turn it into venom. Yeah. Um, man, can't wait till my daughter's 15. <laughs> we already, we already get a little bit of venom. She's a little venomous, but not too bad. That's all right. Um, you take the fangs out. And so bucks at the house, you know, tea is up in the morning, you know, bucks already making breakfast. Mm-hmm. She's like, no, thank you. You know, it's well, very I, cold and distant. Oh, Buck. In, in, intentionally kind of laying it on thick. Mm-hmm. And Buck just calls her out. Like, mm-hmm. you know, because they're, she knows him. It's been a long time since they've been together as a family yeah. to the point that Miles and Maisie don't even know who he is. Yeah. So it's been at least eight years if we're doing the math there. Yeah. So, but Tia knows who he is. And Tia also knows he's not been around mm-hmm. and mix that in with just Tia being venomous anyway. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's, it, Buck just calls her out. Are you always like this? Mm-hmm. You know? And so, you know, then we get Miles and Maisie, who are, in all intents and purposes, like the comedy relief in the movie. They are. Yeah. And they're great, um, too. It's They really I, are. I got a feeling like this will come up a little later as well, so I'll be brief here. Yeah. As much as last, with last week at the Great Outdoors, we we kind of pan the child actors there. Right. They, they bring it in this movie. All the kid actors in yeah. this movie bring it. I mean, these two and like the little boy sitting outside the principal's office yeah. and uh, <laughs> yeah. the kids at the birthday party, like they all, they deliver, they do a great job. Um, so like B- Buck is stepping up, mm-hmm. like, and you figure these are kids that it's, it's family. He doesn't know them. They don't know him, but it's family. And so he's stepping up and he's doing the best he can. He's making them breakfast. Yep. Like he's providing a cherry house. Yeah. He's, he know. is legitimately trying. He's, he's, he's very not hard. just mailing it in. Right. Um, you know, Miles and Maisie come down and, you know, he's, he's cooking our garbage. <laughs> you know, <laughs> who's this guy? That's your Uncle Buck. I have an uncle, you know, and so they just, he's the kind of, the kids warm up to him pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Um, I think because Tia, even, even with her just menace, she, like, she at least confirms that he is who he is. Yeah. So these it breaks down a little bit of the barrier for the kids because like okay well he is our uncle as Tia said so well I mean he's but, he's friendly he's fun yeah. he's engaging he's making breakfast for them which we, we, normally you I, I yeah. get the impression you don't get yeah. adult figures see, doing the, that these are things like he's providing already things Bob and Cindy just yeah. don't do. he's present yeah I mean you could just simply leave it at that he's present <laughs> yeah he's he's cooking and so you know Miles is like you put onions in the egg like it's just. It's so foreign what he's doing, yeah. <laughs> to which then Buck is even like taken aback. Like, like he's he keeps it in, but you almost get a sense that it's like these kids, like you guys have a family. You don't know what any of this is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Tia's like, I'll I'll make you I'll make you some cereal when I get back down. She's drinking coffee. Buck's like, yeah. does your mom know you drink coffee? And she's just side eyes him, like, yeah, you know, because because she's a fifteen year girl, she knows everything. You know, Tia is the most she's the most adult person in, in the world. Cause she chooses to be, well, I mean, she resents her parents and by <clears throat> yeah. extension, she's going to resent buck. You know, she's yeah. not going to give him a chance because yeah. you know, she's been hurt by adults. Right. And, and, and I'm not going to open myself up to be hurt by this guy. Yeah. And I'm a super dramatic teenager on top of all of it. Mm-hmm. She goes upstairs to, you know, brush Maisie's hair, fun little exchange yeah. of, you know, Where's mom and dad? They went to Indianapolis. No, they didn't. Yeah, okay. No, they didn't. They did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we just get a bunch, like the kids get off to school, um, you know, which <laughs> it's one of, one of my favorite lines. My wife's favorite lines too is pulls up in front of the high school and of course the kids are just like the entire student body is standing there at yeah. the drop off. Of, of course they are. They, all all two thousand students are yeah. there. They stand around to see who's getting dropped off next. It's like the red <laughs> carpet. Um, and so you know, Buck's car backfires. Tia then like dives down. She's so embarrassed. Oh yeah, I love it. Buck just goes tying your shoe. <laughs> 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 and so I mean, just that, just daggers she's throwing at him. You know, and and he calls her bluff every time. Yeah, you know, he's like. You, you know, you're going to be a problem. I will walk you to your first class in mm-hmm. my pajamas tomorrow. Yep. Like, don't mess with me. Um, <laughs> which, that's the one thing Buck has, it, obviously, because he doesn't have any experience with kids, that he doesn't really figure out is you push teenagers, like, they're just, they're going to go. Like, yeah. 
you know, she's beyond the scare tactics portion. Like you can scare the kids as he, as he does with the brush your teeth thing earlier or later on. She goes brush your teeth. Cause I got a friend, you know, yeah. the forensics <laughs> that could check your toothpaste, toothbrush. And it's like, the kids are like, we're going to have to start brushing our teeth. T is far past that. point. Yeah. Like she's not going to fall for these scare tactics. She's just going to continue pushing and pushing and pushing. Well, I mean, he's very direct with her, which which you yes. get the impression is the polar opposite of how Bob and Cindy parent her. Yes. They yeah. try to be very indirect. Um, right. You know, and, and kind of come at her from the side. And it's just. I think, well, she just steamrolls them. Yeah. I mean, they're but it's, it's clearly not working. No. And and I think they deal, especially mom, they deal with it, with their sort of pain and anxiety just by delving into work. Yeah, yeah. Like that's their outlet. That's if I, I stay busy. Yep. Then... I, I this is where I'm accomplished. I can do my job well and I can make money. Yeah. And uh and so like Buck after drops the kids off, goes, you know, goes home and he starts to realize that he's not a part of their lives. Mm-hmm. Um he's been cropped out of a wedding photo, yep. and it's just these are there's choices that Cindy's made. I don't think Bob is too present at I, all. Yeah, he, Bob comes across <laughs> as a nice enough guy, but just kind of, yeah, just, yeah. And I don't think, I don't know if it's intentional. I think it's just how he is. He's just I a little so aloof. I think so too. I, I get like, he's, <laughs> he's the guy that like, uh, hey, dad, I don't think I'm gonna do hamster style anymore. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like that, he's that dad, but just yeah. a smile on his face. Yeah. You know, that's nice. It's like it's and so Cindy thinks she's doing her best to keep the family together, but she's equally as distant, just a little more melancholy than Bob. Yeah. Um, And so, you know, Buck realizes that he's not an important part of their life. Yeah. He's not. He's never met the two youngest kids. He couldn't even remember their names. Mm -hmm. Um, He even says, you know, to to Bob, like, I never, you know, since you moved it, because Buck is now the closest family member to them. Yeah, literally in proximity. And it's like, yeah, you never invited me over since you moved. And, oh, we're getting around to it kind of thing. Yeah. Um, then we just get a bunch of of John Candy as a dad things. Yes. Like, you know, um, <laughs> takes the kids bowling because yeah. it's bowling night. He's an elite. And you get the vibe. All of this is in the city. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, he, yeah, that's he, what his yeah, life yeah, is. He's, ta- he's taking them to parts of his life takes him up into the city, which we, you know, he's bowling, but he's, he's engaged. Like it's bowling league, mm-hmm. but he's still like the kids get a turn to bowl. T is hating every moment of this. You know, we get pal. <laughs> well, there's, there's the other guy with a toothpick who hits yeah, that's on her. Pal. Yeah, that's pal. right. That's right. Yeah. I forgot his name. Yeah, he's, he's got like the hair lip and you know, <laughs> it comes up and he's, or it's like, I, it might even be like, just, you know, like a herpy yeah. or something. <laughs> He's trying to hit on you. College tight, <laughs> <laughs> firm, firm is already. Oh god, firm. what a creep! Oh, it's what so a, gross. What a gross creep! And and Buck flies in, and he, he every, runs him off fast. Everybody knows who Buck is. Yeah, you know, comes in and and off off pal goes. You got somewhere to be, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm just glad his name is Pal. I, it's got it right there on his butt. Like, it's just yeah. so sleazy. I also love how, how Buck. Uh, he, he, he he tries to. He, he knowingly is is telling Tia about bowling and, and trying to sell her on it while also being yeah. smarmy. Yeah, bowling's a great sport. It's virtually virtually impossible to become pregnant while doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's that's a piece I was getting to. Also, is when he picks Tia up from school, mm-hmm. um, she's there with with Bug, her Bug. boyfriend, her boyfriend esque figure, um, and you know, Tia's doing what she can to like prove her point with Buck of like, yeah. you can't, you're, you're not an you, influence. Like you, you can't control you me. Yeah. Yeah. As she's like making out, you know, you, know. <laughs> you get the impression he's probably a couple years older than her. Yes. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And so um, Buck's just watching like grossed out, but you know, Miles says something about like that. Or it's like, that seems like an irresponsible thing to do during flu season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maisie's like, I bet she's getting the tongue. Like, <laughs> That's <yeah>. right. <laughs> the tongue. <laughs> and uh and so and, and Buck just tells her, like, I that guy's no good. You know, yeah, I know he calls like, him a predator. Yeah. He's just like, I know what he's out for. And of course T is just like, you don't know. And and it's like, and that just shows I mean, like 
this is I saw this was the I think the first movie that Hughes had written, produced, and directed. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he's got his fi- uh, like the entire thing is him. Yeah, this is his fingerprints all over it. He does a great job, really, of writing. Tia, in some ways, might be his most realistic teenager that he's written. She's definitely caustic. Yes, because you look at a lot of early Hughes stuff with 16 Candles and Pretty in Pink, and it's like, it's all great, Breakfast Club, etc. Mm-hmm. It's like there's there's glimpses of teenagers, but at the same time, they're all so much, they're, they're just extra. Like, yeah. all of those characters are just extra. They're their vocabulary is more than what a typical teenagers would be, et cetera, et cetera. But well, they, also kind, they also kind of fit into like niches and categories. Exactly. Like and, there, and there's only the jock, with, there's the nerd. Only in those niches. There's, there's the, no crossover. There's the popular girl. Yeah. But it's like, then you get to Tia and it's like. She's you, raw. Yeah. Very raw. And she's hurt. Mm-hmm. And, and, but you also sense you work with teens. I worked with teens. I got a teen that she she still struggles with grasping why. Yeah. Like, she knows she hurts. She's not quite experienced enough to to converse as to why or even what hurts. Yeah, she can't, uh, she can't put it to words. Right. And so she just acts out of that pain. Yeah. And everything is just violent. It just la- and- lashes out. Yeah, you know, these are and, the kind of kids I like working with too. I I love again. Again, I'm a school counselor for a living. Right. I I I don't know. I, it's a point of pride for me to win these kids over. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it, but at the same time, you don't treat it like a game. Like yeah. you you're serious about these kids. It's not yeah. like aha, that kid's troubled and watch what I can do with him. No, it's like we're really trying to save these kids. Mm. Um, but yeah, T, I mean, Tia is. I see this, and you even go back like last week. It's like. Like Buck, like from you know, Great Outdoors, that he had some realism to him. But like you watch Tia, and it's like she's completely naive with boys. Yeah, but she's also not going to listen to anything an adult tells yeah. her. You know, and it's like, yeah, that's pretty, well, well. I mean, the kids, common. especially Buck and Benny from the Great Outdoors, they're in a stable, loving family. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And with John Candy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with John Candy. And this, and this time, it's not John Candy as the direct parental figure, right? Uh, and again, it's. She's just she's hurt and she's wounded and she doesn't know how to make sense of it and so all she knows is is lashing out yeah and trying to hurt the people that she perceives hurt her yeah it, even with yeah and it's just with that it's it's like it's like the dark phoenix and how she can't even harness her powers like <laughs> when when it just when it manifests it's it's just all encompassing yeah. like everybody's getting a piece yep. <laughs> um, and that's what Bug's looking for is a piece. <laughs> and so, What's his last name? Spray. <laughs> <laughs> and it just cracks himself up. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Miles and Maisie are just loving it too. Oh yeah, they're loving it. Uh, and so we do. You know, we've got that kind of subplot going with with Tia and Bug and Buck trying to protect Tia from him, but also not knowing how to do it in a way that doesn't just push her to him. Yeah. Um, and so he's trying, he, like I say, he takes the kids bowling, um, you know, th- again, just a series of things like yeah. while the parents are gone, um, you know, it's, it's Miles's birthday. Yeah. And so Buck throws the birthday party, yeah. like, um, makes, gets up in the morning. He's decorated the entire home, um, makes gigantic, <laughs> the big gi- pancakes. What impressed me even more was the, was the equally huge pad of butter on top <laughs> i never really paid attention to it till this time the massive pancakes are a thing but he's got a like gigantic like floor tile size <laughs> pad of butter on, on top they of make them a 12 by 12 inch inch slices and i mean he's got streamers from the ceiling you yeah. get a sense that like this is a birthday celebration that miles has mm-hmm. never had before um and so you know you should see the toast i couldn't even get it in the house like, <laughs> <laughs> But he's, Which, le- he's legit trying. Yeah. And oh, My- yeah. Miles like, and Maisie and he, see it. And you get the impression Tia notices, but she's too proud. Yes, to, way to, too proud. Yeah, to let herself kind of give yeah. in to that. And so, um, yeah, it's like it's just it's like Christmas morning for these kids when yeah. they come down to, to that. Because they've never seen that level of 
care and devotion before. Yeah, on, on that kind um, of like 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 micro level, like yeah. like like the like the gesture kind of level. Yeah, it has the birthday party. You know, the friends come over. Um, you know, the Pooter the clown shows up. <laughs> and he's like, "Oh man, I had a bachelorette party the night before." It's like he's drunk. Yeah, and and Buck doesn't even let him in the house. You know, just no. You're hey, I've I've had a few before too, but not when I'm going to go entertain kids. Oh, you you know, and he just knocks him out like. Uh, there's a parent meeting with the vice principal uh-huh. at, the, at the school, <laughs> you know, so it's fun. Buck walks in smoking a cigar, realizes two thirds down the hallway that he shouldn't be smoking a yeah, cigar. Oh, oh, school. I've been to school. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, ducks into a bathroom, yeah. you know, to get rid of the cigar realizes that it's like an elementary bathroom. So yeah. it's just, John Candy's a big dude and big dudes in a small bathroom are funny. Yeah. You know, and uh, he goes in and he's talking up the kid who's going to be going in next. Let me go in first. So I kind of level this out, you know, walks in and uh, you know, this woman's got this, just this giant mole on her chin. Yes. And it's like a, it's like a slice of pepperoni. It, it is. It's, it's, like it's a hairy a, pepperoni, it's a very large mole. Yeah. You know, Buck just introduces himself. Hi, I'm Buck Malanoma, Molly Russell's wart. Like, yeah. Oh, it, I'm uncle war. He's trying to backpedal. Yeah. All this. And it just, it's like every word is a reference to it. Yeah. He just can't get out of its own way. <laughs> a whole Malanoma head. Yeah. <laughs> Cause yeah, that, that would be a nickname for someone. Old Malanoma. Oh, Malanoma. Buck Malanoma. <laughs> and, so, and so uh you know but this vice principal even is just attacking Maisie for she's you know she's a silly heart she's a dreamer yeah she's a, she doesn't, she's a bad egg yeah she doesn't take her academics career seriously the, which buck's just like what's i don't want a she, six-year-old that she's does that six yeah so he just blasts this woman, you yeah. know, flips her a quarter to go let a rat nod <laughs> off her face. <laughs> like, the first like, time I saw this movie, I was probably, you know, I was probably, you know, 12, 13, 14. And, you know, that line stuck, yeah. stuck with me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just, but you could tell in some ways, kind of like Tia, no one's ever stood up to this woman this way before. Yeah. And so she's just aghast at what to do because I have the power here. Yeah. And you just took it from me. You just like, stripped it just like that. Yeah. I have the title. How dare you? Yeah. Um, and, she, and she's just, uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Kind of Which, like, kind of like Buck on the phone earlier yeah. with Shanice. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they keep cutting to the little, like the little boy with the huge glasses outside. Yeah. And he just, this, the smile, he's just loving it. Yeah. He's listening to all this going on. He's yeah. You get the it. idea. It's probably not his first time to the vice principal's office. Exactly. And so he's just loving how she's being treated. Um, you know, it's just there's just things Buck can't do. He, you know, he washes laundry in the sink because he can't operate the washing he, machine. He can't, he can't figure it out. Fun little scene where we meet Marcy for the first time. Yeah. Apparently, nobody locks the door of this home. Yeah, it's just wide open. She just <laughs> lets herself in. Mar- well, Shanice does it later. Like, just come on in. Mar- Marcy, you know, lets herself in, played by the great Lori Beck. Yes. Um, she hears some violence going on and some really nasty talk. It's very innuendo esque. <laughs> yes. Like what's um, happening in this other room, and and it's kind of they kind of shoot it to look like a horror movie for, yeah, for a couple of they moments do. there, and so she's tiptoeing up, and you know it's like there's some banging and and just some of the vocabulary that uh-huh. is being chosen here. Yes, fits definitely fits doing laundry, but also yes. would be very very mm-hmm. scary to come across someone talking to another person that way. Yeah, so it's screaming behind a closed door. What you think yeah. is another person? Marcy doesn't know that Bob and Cindy are gone. Yeah. And so, um, you know, just all of this going on and then it's, it's Buck. He just, he can't figure out how to open the, the, the washing machine. So they kind of have a little, well, Marcy thinks it's a meat cute, but I don't yeah. think anything's cute about Marcy. Um, <laughs> she's so rigid. <laughs> People love the hyphen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get, I get compliments on the hyphen, um, but she's just like, she's taken aback. I, Cindy didn't tell me that they were leaving, you know, and so Bob's or Buck's telling her what's going on. He's like, oh, well, family, it's important for, you know, something like this needs a family member. Yeah. And Buck's like, yeah, they'll be home in a couple of days. Well, when my father, you know, I was gone for three weeks and it's like, so Buck's almost kind of processing like, oh man, this might be something a little more long-term than I was planning on. Mm-hmm. 
but we meet Marcy and she's like, well, would I came to invite Cindy for some coffee. Would you like to join me for some coffee? He's like, yeah, not right now. Rain check. <laughs> <laughs> I love how, how like, 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 ignorantly direct she is yes that's the one i was gonna say very direct rain check rain like, check <laughs> <laughs> um sure you know and, and so that's enough of marcy for now um we get more of you know tia's stepped out to this little it's not even a party it's just kind of a let's go hang out at this pavilion and all these picnic tables mm-hmm. and make out um <laughs> the make out pavilion <laughs> yeah, Buck shows up and embarrasses Tia. Tia, you know, is just she's to the point where she's like, "I'm, I'm done. I'm not letting this man do it anymore." Mm-hmm. Shanice calls, um, which <laughs> it, it's interesting because there's there's little holes, very very small holes, where it's like, okay, when Buck called Shanice to tell her what was going on, um, Shanice wouldn't let her have a word in edgewise. Uh, oh, uh- uh, but 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 he's but he provided the phone number. Yes. <laughs> Somehow she got the phone yeah. number to Bob and Cindy's. And so, granted, this was back in the eighties, where there were, yeah, you know, there was no internet, but there were phone books. So yeah. who knows? Uh, but Shanice calls, and uh, you know Tia answers and takes it upon herself to mm-hmm. to tell Shanice that he's he's out with Marcy. Yeah. Now this is Buck. Well, okay, Buck had called Shanice. Um, prior just to hey i apologize for how it's gone on this is you know just to kind of just kind of water under the bridge kind of yeah. moment you know he did so that's probably where it come from he did call her and be like you know i, I really miss you you know i love you etc um you know this is what's this is how things have been here and so when shanice calls back that's where you know after buck has already been like devoted like when i get back i'll come work for you we'll be you know good to go yeah well He's out with Marcy. They go out a lot. They stay out late, a lot. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So she, um, and, and she's like, well, if he's going to mess with my life, I'm going to mess with his back. Yeah. That's really, yeah. yeah Tia, Tia got real nasty. Yeah. Like she's nasty anyway, yeah. but this conniving stuff in yeah. the background. Rare, very resentful. Cause she does it in an earlier phone call with Cindy. Cindy calls to talk to Buck and Cindy's already distraught. Like, I can't believe I've left Buck to yeah. tend to my family. You know, and Buck's just, you know, and Buck's not helping himself yeah. either. <laughs> I've got a couple of questions for you. Um, where do you find plates like those? Uh, are those yeah. antiques? Yeah. Oh, England. England. So how often do you feed the dog? Yeah. <laughs> dog how often does a dog like that eat? Five, six, how, how often do you think he eats? Four or five times a day? Once. He eats once. Uh, does he drink water? <laughs> and you could just see, because see, like, it keeps cutting back to her, and you yeah. can see the panic on her face. Oh, just my God, growing. yeah. And she's trying to hold it together because, yeah. again, he has stepped in to offer yes. and provide. And she knows that they have to rely on him. Yeah, they have to. And so she can't just unload on him. Yeah. And and, and not to mention everything she's going through right now. Right. Like her father's on the brink of death. Yeah. And Buck's like, I leave the toilet seat up for the dog. Like he's, <laughs> he's, he's leaning into every belief that yes. she has without knowing any of the other great things he's been yeah. doing. So she wants to talk to Miles and Maisie. Well, Tia's been overhearing anyway. So while Buck runs off to get the phone, you know, T is just, again, lying, mm-hmm. lying through her teeth. Yeah. You know, he, he drinks, you know, like he's yeah. a, to which it's just, it's just, T is just an awful person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just awful. So, you know, that phone call happened earlier. She does it again with Shanice, just so vindictive. Yeah. And, yeah, and so, word. um, so Shanice basically comes to the house to confront Buck. Yeah. And just happens to be Marcy had forced her way in again. Mm-hmm. Buck wants nothing to do with her. He finally humors her. He's like, I'll dance with yeah, you. He's, he's trying to politely kind of yes. dis- dismiss her. But yeah, she just insists, well, let's dance. Right. So he, <laughs> fine. You know, so he gets up and he, you know, is this dirty dancing? Is that the one where he grabs her by the hair? And he's like yanking, <laughs> yanking her around by the hair. And she, um, she like puts her, her legs around one of his and is yes. literally like banging her legs. <laughs> Like, like violently into yes, his, yes, like that. Like, that's her interpretation of like dancing sexy with someone. Yes, it's just yeah. Oh, <laughs> Shanice walks in because again the door's unlocked. Yeah, Shanice walks in and this confirms Tia's lies, even yeah. though it doesn't really. Yes, um, but the, the narrative that she spun, yeah, right. And so she ends it. You know, 
like Marcy sees her first, so Buck just keeps kind of dancing. Mm-hmm. And we're getting my cardio in. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh and so Shanice just ends it. Yeah. And it's done. Yeah, and uh you know, sends Marcy on her way. Mm-hmm. Fine. I'll just go home and wait for the Federal Express man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> it's like because Marcy is so hungry for She's male attention. So desperate. And you get yeah. the impression that it's not working with anybody. No, no. I, it wouldn't with me either. Um, <laughs> so Buck's kind of hit emotional rock bottom here because he yeah. really did care about Shanice. Yeah, he did. Um, and so, you know, he's having a drink, sharing it with the dog. Um, yeah. And so he's just this kind of where he turns a little bit. Um, you know, because he even says that people used to envy my, you know, my lifestyle. Mm-hmm. But he's kind of realized, like, it's not all, it's not as no. great as it seems. Yeah, there's li- there's limits to happiness when you kind of yeah. isolate yourself like that. So we come across kind of a conclusion here. Tia has bound to determine I'm, you know, Buck's not getting in my way. Yeah. So she I'll, I'll show out. him. So she sneaks out to a party. She leaves from school. Yeah. Buck shows up to get her from school. She's not there. Because um, Buck at the bowling alley had been given a hot tip by his friend. Because um, mm-hmm. that's how Buck makes his money. Basically, cheats on horse races. You know, and... Uh, a big, big tip came in. Like, this will be enough yeah. money to, you know, to take care of the next year for me. So he was, he was wanting Tia to watch the kids so that he can go to the horse race. Tia bailed on him. Yeah. Buck can't find her. So now he's stuck with, well, I, tells Miles and Macy, you guys are going with me. I got to take you to the track. Yeah. I have to. Um, kind of realizes that's not the right thing to do. Yeah, he has him in the car and everything. Yeah. And then just kind of like, oh, what am I doing? Like looks yeah. in the rear view mirror and yeah. sees him. He's, so he calls Shanice, begs her like, hey, look, I look, I get it. You don't want to talk to me. Yeah. But do it for these kids. I need your help. And yeah. Shanice says, she's like, I'm only because there's kids involved, Buck. Yep. She's like, Tia took off on me. And of course, Shanice calls him out. Oh, well, you can't take the kids to the track. He's like, I had him in the car. Yeah. Like I, but I got to go get Tia. So Shanice, okay, I'll come into the city. <laughs> Buck then leaves the kids home by themselves before Shanice gets there. Yeah. Luckily, one of the kids is Macaulay Culkin. So he's used <laughs> to being home alone. Yeah. Or he will. He will. He be. will. <laughs> this, this is actually a prequel. It's, it's, in, yeah. the, it's in the same Hughes-iverse. That's right. So yeah, he's not, he's not been home alone. This is his first, first time being home alone. That's how he's um, so prepared. Yeah. He, he knew what to do. He had kind of a, kind of a fun scene where Shanice shows up and he's talking to her through the mail slot. Yeah. You know, um, again, just a, another little Hughesism thing where, like, he keeps flipping the mail slide up to talk to her. And at one point, there's, like, two people staring in at him. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like it's just, like, it caught him off guard. But it doesn't make any sense because clearly it's not. You well, know, it's Shanice... like, like the skeletons and exactly. playing trains and automobiles yeah. and Home Alone 2. And exactly. Just, it's just, just silly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Miles is like, can I see your, can I see your identification? And... Uh, and he's like, yeah, you know, she's like, can, can you take it out, please? <laughs> and like in the meantime, she's put something in her mouth to hold it. She's like, take yeah. it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just a fun little scene. Uh, as Buck goes looking for Tia, so <laughs> there was a fun little thing earlier where, um, you know, there's a conversation about his hat, and he's yeah. like, you know, about like pe- people don't. This hat angers people. People hate this hat. You know? <laughs> and it's one of those, like, like for people that haven't it's seen it. It's just a fedora. Those, like, kind of, yeah. Well, there, there's all, he has that, like, that big fuzzy. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, almost, yeah, it's, that's like, right. it's almost like a hunter's hat. Yeah, you're right. That's the hat. That's the hat. And so, uh, yeah, he pulls up to a stoplight or whatever. Another car pulls up next to him. And it's, he's just talking to these parents. You see the party? Yeah, it's over on whatever lane. Our son's there. And the dad's like, you're not thinking about going in there with that hat, are you? <laughs> They'll kill you. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> So he changes his hat like to a fedora. A couple of drips. Yes. That, oh, yeah. God. Yeah. They're terrible. Yeah. Uh, so Buck shows up at the party. He's wearing a different hat. He's just just making his way through the party. Yeah. You know, you could tell it's not Buck's first party. Yeah. Um, but, like, the kids are kind of picking on him and playing with yeah. him. And he's just rolling with it. Yeah. Because that's not what he's there for. He's not going to defend himself. He's there for Tia. Because he knows she's with Bug. Yeah. Meanwhile, these are, like, countersinked with... Shots of mm-hmm. Bug and a woman or in a girl in a dark bedroom. She's telling him no, and he's forcing himself anyway. Um, you hear Tia's voice. Yeah. Saying like, so, like, like, no, stop. Right. 
And so Buck finds the room. Um, you know, we get kind of another horror film kind of feel. Yeah, yeah as, we do. As Buck takes a drill through the key, like right through the middle of the, yeah. the doorknob. And a bus open, smoke billowing in. I don't yeah, know where all the smoke came from. It's like a, it's like a James <laughs> yeah, Cameron shot. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's like straight so, out of Aliens. It's so goofy. All the smoke billowing <laughs> in. You know, turns the light on and realizes it's not Tia. Yeah, it's you know, Bug. Like, it's but, Bug. But it's not Tia. But it's not Tia. Um, to which then he just kind of has a sour look on his face, like, you know, almost a sense of relief. Yeah. But then he realizes, like, this guy is a predator. Yeah. Turns the lights back off and fires up the drill, you know, and then <laughs> we cut, we cut to Tia walking, you know, by herself on a, on main street or yes. something. Main street USA. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and you could tell she's just hurt. She's got yeah. tears in her eyes, yeah. you know, confused, distraught. And, and what is probably the quietest Buck's car has ever been. Yeah. <laughs> and Buck. Yeah. And Buck. But he, uh, he comes rolling up, you know, and basically, just get on in, you know, yeah. like he barely says a word. Doesn't yeah. need to. Right. You know, and it's like you give him a lot of credit because like there's nothing in his life that should prepare him for these moments. Yeah. Because he, they say earlier he's 40, you know, 40 year old Buck Russell, never, never even interested in being tied down. Mm-hmm. And yet, no, he just has this natural knack of what to yeah. do because he cares. He's just a caring person. Yeah. She gets in, lets it all out. You're right. Everything you said was right. And he just, you know, he just listens. Like this isn't this. If if the roles were flipped, she would have thrown "I told you so" yeah. right back in his yeah. face. And yeah. he just he he doesn't say a word. No, he's, he's just like, it's, present. He's just there. Right. No judgment. It, no shame. No, it's just are you going to tell my parents about this? No, no. Like you're. He's just happy she's safe. Yeah. Um, and so you know, Tia finally gets around to what you do. What you do with Bug? And he's like, <laughs> oh, about that. <laughs> yeah, they've got him bound and gag in the in the trunk mm-hmm. of the car. He's <laughs> remained very quiet as well. <laughs> and uh, and so, um, you know, they open the truck. Buck forces Bug to apologize. He just, oh, I'm sorry. Like none yeah. of it is it meant. Yeah, very None's, insincere. Yeah. Um, she fires up the drill, whatever, you know, just to mess with him. So <laughs> I don't know if I let... told you that. I'm an amateur dentist. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, it's an amateur dentist. Uh, so they let Bug go. He, you know, he just, you know. I, I, I'm going to sue you. Yeah, as, as I'm going to tell my goes, dad. My dad's a lawyer. I'm going to sue you for everything you got. You know, sue your family, your whole family. And so uh, they, they backs the car up and Bug takes off running. Yeah. Buck just gets out his golf clubs and. You know, he's a pretty good shot with yeah, a five he is. wood. <laughs> he, gets a, he calls it looks, looks like a five wood situation. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just pegs just pegs Buck with a golf ball. Um so Tia and Buck are cool now. You know. Um of course Shanice is still at the house. So Tia and Shanice have a sit down and she, and Tia just comes clean. Yep, yep, comes clean. I lied about all of it. You know, um, Buck's a great guy. I think he'd be a great husband, a great father. And she even almost goes, I don't know if I say too far, too but far. she really yeah. lays it on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, he's an amazing and, and man. Buck's got his ear up to the yeah. door listening to the whole thing. Yeah, Shanice gets up. She senses this is a setup. Yeah. Like, this, Shanice, this is, there's, yeah, she kind of gets the idea this is almost a little too much now. Yeah. So Shanice gets up and, you know, Tia's clearing her throat to give Buck the cue to get uh, out of the uh, way. Uh, uh. <laughs> so she kicks the door. He does get out of the way, but then gets right back in front of the door. Well, Shanice knows Buck better than anybody. Yeah. And uh, kicks it again and, you know, knocks him flat. <laughs> um, and so uh, he he agrees, I'm, we'll start work with you. Bob and Cindy come back. Tia is, she's been broken. Yeah. I guess there's no other way. It's like she was a wild stallion type horse that has finally been broken. And, and she just realizes that, yes, I've been my own problem. <laughs> Yeah. You know, Tia meets Cindy with a hug. Cindy promises their relationship will improve because again, Cindy's been spending her time with a parent that won't be there anymore. Yeah. So even though we don't see it, I think there's some reflective measures going on where even Cindy and Bob are like, we got to be there for our kids. Like, well, and it, they don't make this explicit in the movie, but if you no. also think about what Cindy's been experiencing for the past week, her father almost died. Yeah. And yeah. The, the guilt she feels from moving away. And, you know, Tia said it earlier in the movie, although she used it as an attack, you know, the whole, right. 
you know, like I'd have a heart attack too if I moved my family away. But yeah, she just, you get the idea that she just feels so guilty for everything mm -hmm. involving the family. Right, right. And then covers it with work because yep. that's the reason we move. Yep. Um, and so everybody's good. Like, you know, Shanice is just blabbing. So nice to meet you. Because again, she's probably never met him. Yeah. You know, she's just, you got a beautiful home or whatever. <laughs> Her buck's like, Shanice, we're going home. We're not dying. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And so, uh, you know, Buck invites Tia to meet up with him in the city yeah. for some coffee. She waves. We get a Buck freeze frame wave. Yeah. Cut to credits, and that's Uncle Buck. Yeah, yeah, really solid movie. Any final, it is, any it final is. thoughts on this before we get out of the bits? Um, it, I think you just nailed it. It's it's just a solid film. Yeah. Is it is it um full of hijinks and kind of screwball like some of Hughes' other films? No, um, but it is. It's just top to bottom, you know, solid cast, pretty much. You know, John Candy is just John Candy, yeah. and it's just a it's just a it's a good movie. Yeah. Like, kind of like Great Outdoors. Is it a great film? No. Is it winning awards? No. But is it just comfort food? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's, it's got a little more to it, you know, than a, than a yeah. Great Outdoors. You know, it's, it's very, you know, relationship heavy. There's not a mm -hmm. ton of plot to it. You know, a little bit more than the Great Outdoors. Right. You know, but yeah, there's not a lot. There's yeah. not a lot of plot. But it's, it's all about how the, you know, the character interaction. So, yeah. yeah. So, hey, folks, at this point in the show, Oz and I will each give our own unique rating to the film we've been talking about, 1989's Uncle Buck. I was reading, before you did that, just, that just reminded me, I was reading Wikipedia, you know, reliable source Wikipedia yesterday. Yeah. They, uh, this film came out in, in like August of 1989, and mm -hmm. they shot it. In January and February of 1989. Well, that's a quick edit. Yes. So that was a fast turnaround. Yeah, real fast. Yeah. So, hey, Oz, how would you rate Uncle Buck? Uh, I'm going to give this seven car backfires. <laughs> seven car backfires. <laughs> what are you giving it? I'm going to go with 25 cents. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Yep. I like that. 25 cents. Next up, Oz and I have been scouring the interwebs, mm. searching for unprofessional reviews that tickle our funny bones, and we hope they tickle yours as well on our next segment, Outside Insights. Hey, Oz, what is your Outside Insight? Um, this came, my inside, my Outside Insight was December 20th of 2022. <clears throat> it's a one-star review. Hmm. The maudlin and tonally confusing script is saved by the king, John Candy. <laughs> who chews up scenes and evokes some degree of sadness and foolish glee. Otherwise, lots of sexual menace and a fun family flick. More like, more like Uncle Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing as hard at the Uncle Sucks, just because it's really low-hanging fruit. Oh, it's but, right there. But yeah. it's still funny. More yeah. like Uncle Sucks. Right. <laughs> Like, I would laugh if someone was like, I've saw Uncle Buck. More like Uncle Suck. Like, I'd be like, oh, that's good. That's yeah. way to be way to be quick. So that's my outside insight. Khalil didn't like it. Khalil. All right. No. What do you got? Uh, mine, uh, as always, comes from the Internet Movie Database. And this was left uh, by Witness to It. I'm, I'm <laughs> guessing he, he was one of the uh, one of the war boys from, from Mad Max <laughs> uh, Fury Road. Or, or a Wu-Tang member. Or, yes, possibly as well. <laughs> Left in March 2024, only a Ooh. couple of months prior to the time of this yeah. recording. Yeah. This is a 1 out of 10. Uh, and the subject line is, why this is popular is mystifying to me. Wow. For a comedy, this had zero laughs for me. Buck likes to bowl. What kind of snobbery is this here? Gamble on horses, smoke cigars, and heaven forbid his car is old and makes noise. Therefore, he's looked down on by what's-her-face, the mother. <laughs> Add to this his girlfriend, an incredibly nasty woman, uh, who, who won't let him even explain anything. An absolute horrible movie written by someone with a warped sense of humor sold to a crowd primarily rich and white. An insult to moviegoers everywhere. It's amazing that anybody liked or likes this swill. Oh, boy. Yeah. This uh, this person was... Uh... I think Tia wrote this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> She's angry. Yeah, just very, very... Uh, doesn't want anything to do with Uncle Buck. God, I hate my Uncle Buck. Ugh. 
<laughs> all right, folks, it's that point in the show you've all been waiting for our signature. Let's talk about Flick segment, the three, two, one, in which Oz and I will each share three goods, two bads, and one huh about this week's movie, Uncle Buck. Hey, Oz, what are your three goods? Uh, my first one is it's just Buck's character discovery. I don't want to call it a character growth because, sure. um, but I think it's more of a discovery. Like this was an opportunity he's never had before and he flourished. Yeah. Um, you know, he, was he unconventional in a few ways? Yeah. But what there is no, there, there's a thousand parenting manuals, but there's no one right way to do it. And he did a great job. So his character discovery in this was, was solid. Mm -hmm. Uh, but two, uh, I thought Tia was a very formidable foe for Buck. Yeah. Um, having someone that you care about also being the biggest thorn in your side, yeah, your biggest um, threat was tough because it's not someone Buck could just ignore or walk away from. Yeah. Like he, he had to protect her. Yeah. Uh, and my third is just Lori Metcalf. Um, like yeah. Marcy's role was it, it, it was very one dimensional and pretty pointless anyway, other than just to create something yeah, for yeah, Shanice, yeah, create the, the, you know, the drama, create the conflict. But but it's like it's Lori Metcalf and she's gonna give you her best no matter how <laughs> big or small the role yeah, is. She was only in two scenes in the whole movie. Yeah, that's it. And she just she just you know she's just so awkward. Like yeah. she just nails it. Um, and so those are my three goods. I was reading the trivia that I guess she was really nervous. This was earlier in her career, right? Yeah, you know, pre Roseanne, mm -hmm. and she was really nervous about it. I guess John Candy, um, like she was very grateful for how he helped kind of calm her down and helped her kind of e ease, oh, in, ease into the scene. I I read a a bit not about this, but just about John Candy that uh, there was somebody that had been hired on like SCTV. <clears throat> And when they showed up, um, you know, they were, they were hired as almost like, like crew. Okay. And so they were there and they were, you know, taking boxes off of whatever, you know, just doing whatever manual labor crew stuff would do. Sure. And he said, that, and this big guy come over and was helping, you know, he's just, and they were doing this for 15, 20 minutes. And finally someone, you know, comes like, you know, Mr. Candy, we need you in makeup. <laughs> It's like the guy was so new to this and the show was so new, but it's like, this is one of the stars of the show yeah. that it just doesn't put himself at a higher level. Like, and so it doesn't surprise me that John Candy stepped in and was just trying to help everybody deliver their best. Yeah. Literally in that case. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what, uh, what are you, what are your three goods? Oh man. My, my three goods. There's so many to pick from, from this there movie. Are. Um, I'm going to start with uh, just the, the the breakfast scene that first morning that Buck mm -hmm. is there. It really, like, you know, Tia walks in and she's just got that wall up. Yeah. And, you know, how she's she's trying to grab the power just right away in, in this dynamic. And he just won't let her have it. And then and it follows up with Miles grilling Buck and that, that really fun Q&A uh, back, back, yeah. back and forth. Yeah. How many times or how many or what's your record for consecutive questions asked? 38. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love it. Like, you, you, you know, like you mentioned earlier, like, does your mother know you drink coffee? And just yeah. it, 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 it established how these dynamics were going to be amongst the four of them. And I thought that scene really just knocked it out of the park. Well, it's like, he's, she said she didn't want breakfast and he put a plate of in, in front of her anyway. Yeah. And she's just like, are you deaf? Like yeah. just so mm -hmm. just demeaning and condescending. And yeah, it's just like, hmm, I made you breakfast. Mm -hmm. It's a buck special. It's just like half a grapefruit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the garbage. Oh God! I've got like a dozen possible goods here. I'm just, I'm just going through. Uh, let's let's go with for my second one. Um, just the horror sequence as Buck is breaking in, you know, trying to track oh, down Tia. Yeah, you know, and you mentioned it earlier, but just the backlighting and the fog and yeah. like the musical score changed a little bit. Yeah, and then you know he, he busts in. It turns out it's that Tia, and he kind of like pauses for a moment. You know, because as you mentioned before, he's relieved, but like he still recognizes this guy's this guy's yeah. a threat to anyone who's near him. So he kind of just grins and looks back at him. So it, I just love the, the tonal shift for about 30 yeah. seconds there in the movie. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. And my last one, again, I know I'm repeating myself a little bit from earlier as well, but just when uh, right after that sequence, when Buck finds Tia walking down the street, 
he he doesn't shame her. He's not gloating. As you mentioned, there was no told you so. He just just opens the door for her. Mm-hmm. And yeah. she gets in the car. And and I think she's even kind of expecting him to do that initially because she's a little hesitant to start talking. And then right. he just gives her the space to to process and emote and do everything that she needs to do in that moment. And he like you couldn't ask for a better person to be there opposite from you when you're for someone who's ex- who just experienced what she experienced. Like she right. was almost raped. Like she was yeah. almost raped. And and he was just there and present. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like those are those are my three goods. So hey, Oz, what are your two bads? Um, I think my first bad is I think Cindy's character kind of gets a bad rap. Um, I don't think Bob or Cindy are great parents, but I think the movie depicts Cindy like they don't really give Bob anything. To yeah, do. he's just kind of there. And therefore, that leaves Cindy to carry the weight of being the bad parent. Like, even the conversation of, like, hey, how was soccer practice? I don't play so, you know, like, just just, don't get me wrong. Cindy is an absent mother emotionally. Um, But I just feel that she just, we all all have our moments, Mm -hmm. you know, where, we wish we could have handled something different with our kids yep. or uh, we wish we could be in a different headspace. And, and it's tough when you're trying to balance a career and et cetera, et cetera. And then the news of her dad. And it's um, so I just think every time I've watched this, I feel Cindy's the weakest character in the movie. Um, but as I've watched, like this time watching it, I'm like, I think she kind of gets a bad rap. Like she's almost, identified as like the lazy villain of her family. I, I, I mentioned it earlier, Cindy, she clearly is working through some things on, on yes. her own. And this is even before they got the phone call about right, her father. Right. And you know, she's someone who like, I, I hope like if, as this movie evolves, you know, after the credit sequence and the characters do like, she's someone who I hope seeks out some mental health resources, yes. yeah. you know, they like, finds a therapist, you know, you know, like there's clearly, you know, there very well could be some kind of like anxiety diagnosis mm-hmm. there, um, probably some depression as well. Um, but she's someone who I think could, you know, with the proper supports and resources, professional supports and resources, I think could kind of take back control over over her life and and reestablish those those, you know, more kind of positive relationships with her right. family members. Well, she doesn't get the chance because they, they did make a TV show of this movie. It didn't <laughs> last long with Kevin Meany. Um, but, uh, Bob and Cindy were killed in an auto accident, which is why, um, Buck now takes the kids and it's now sitcom. (laughs) (laughs) What a dark way to start. Like, how are we going to get it to where Bob, we can have episodes of Buck with the kids. Well, we just got to get rid of the parents completely. Um, and so that's, that was my first bad is Cindy. I think Cindy is a character. Um, it's just, it's a complicated character. And I don't think, even at the end, it doesn't feel like it's going to be a long journey. Um, mm-hmm. And I just wish, I guess there would have been a little bit more closure or growth there sure. than what we were provided. Uh, and I'm, two, I'm chuckling before I move on. I'm chuckling because in my head, I'm thinking of like, I, I, I knew that the show existed, but I never yeah. saw it. So I'm thinking in my head, what, what's the theme song like? Right. For, for you know, for this like you know late eighties, early nineties show, where like the sometimes like the the lyrics and the theme songs kind of describe the show. <laughs> right. Your parents died in a car crash, Uncle Buck. <laughs> your whole world's been turned upside down, Uncle Buck. <laughs> your, your parents died in a car crash, Uncle Buck. Your uncle comes to cook your trash, Uncle, uncle Buck. <laughs> <laughs> No. How did he make those pancakes, <laughs> Uncle Buck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my second bad is I just there's times where I think Buck's just unevenly written. Sure. Um I think he I think John Candy delivers it yeah. and sells it. Um but like the conversation on the phone with Cindy about, oh, well, where do you get plates like that? And how often does that dog eat? And does he drink water? Like and it's there's but then it's like Anytime he's not talking to Cindy or it's like, he's fine. Like he's fine. He, he, and there's other little things that just, 
like I know Bob and City couldn't figure out, you know, they didn't know how long they're going to be gone, but it's like, this is this it's not a huh but it it kind of falls into that unevenly written stuff it's like how much how much conversation was had like well you're going to take the kids to school oh uh wednesday um miles has a birthday party you're going to have to host yeah you know and uh make sure you go thursday afternoon to the school to meet with the principal yeah and it's like <laughs> nobody questions any of this stuff like that would have been me calling and be like, hey, I'm going to have to postpone. My dad had a heart attack. Instead of, hey, um, I'm going to send <laughs> I'm going to send the caregiver to have this talk. Yeah. Like, those are just kind of weird, like, vibes. But it just, yeah. so I think Buck was a little unevenly written just because a lot of the things he was dealing with were parental things. Yeah. Not, not just babysitter things, but actual parental things. And uh, he did, I mean, I think John Candy nailed it. Yeah. But, but just some of it was like, are you like, you know, you have a conversation on the phone with Shanice about how you don't want a family, but then you just show us you're a great dad. Yeah. Like, it's like, which, which one is it? Sure. Yeah. I can see that. I validate you know, pick, that. Pick a lane. Yeah. So those are my two bads. What do you got? I really struggled coming up with bads for this. Again, as you mentioned before, I, yeah, is, is this, is this a, like a, a great, great movie? No, it's a, it's a very simple kind of contained yeah. story, but like. So, I mean, both of my bads are more just about people yeah. in the movie. So my, my my first bad is, I mean, I'll start with the obvious one, you know, Bug non-consensually continuing with Tia. Yes. And just, he was the predator mm -hmm. that, that Buck called him out to be as soon as he met him. And so, yeah. yes, um, I'll address this. Again, it can be anyone who perpetrates that, but more often than not, it's males. Males don't be that guy. When someone right. says, no, stop. Yeah. Yeah, point. Yeah, period. Uh, my my second bad is uh, I briefly mentioned it earlier, but as Buck's looking for the party, you know, he pulls up and, and uh, next to another couple who are in a car, and of course they they know exactly where all the local teens are at. Yeah, yeah. And well, our son's there. Well, yeah. I'm gonna. Well, they'll kill you if you go there. <laughs> right. What a couple of drips. Yeah. Like, I mean, speaking of bad parents. <laughs> yeah, they're terrible. <laughs> yeah. They know Your kid's exactly. probably never heard the word no in his life. Yeah, yeah. You know exactly where your 17-year-old son is at, drinking, you know, where there's probably drugs present, mm -hmm. you know, people having sex. Oh, well, I mean, what are we going to do? We can't stop yeah. them. Right. I mean, how are we supposed to stop them and be cool? I know, right? It <laughs> almost kind of goes back to your mean girls, like Amy Poehler's yeah. like, you oh, know, yeah. character in that movie. Cool mom. Yeah, I'm a cool mom. Yeah, be a parent. It's okay to yeah. say no. Yeah, totally fine. All right, so hey, those are my two bads. Hey, Oz, what's your huh? Why are all movie bowlers portrayed as kind of gross lowlifes? <laughs> Pal. <laughs> like, just, yeah, I mean, they all are. You go back to Big Lebowski, they're troubled. You go to King Pit, they're troubled. Like, <laughs> I don't remember any, I, even in Mystery Men, the bowler is kind of, <laughs> it's kind of a weirdo. <laughs> Mystery yeah, it's man. like it's like all movie bowlers are just this kind of like almost like the bowling alley is a gross place to go, and it's like yeah, they may not be a top physical condition, but it's fine. Like I've gone bowling with my family before; it's fine. <laughs> but I, in the movies, it's like we got to make up. There's got to be something wrong with all of them. I do like my bowling alleys to be scummy. Like <laughs> like when I walk into a bowling alley bathroom, I'm put off if there's not a urinal trough. Right, uh, that's true. <laughs> I want to pee in a trough if I'm at a bowling alley. I, <laughs> I peed I, in a trough on Saturday. Oh yeah, on uh, Friday. I mean, yeah. Nice, good yeah. for you. I, four, a four H state fair. Yeah, I want. I want the the big rolling towel, the perpetual <laughs> right. rolling towel. Where I just keep using the towel someone else has used. Yes, I. I, I know. It, I know it supposedly rolls up on it on itself, but let's not kid yeah. ourselves. I, I want a novelty condom machine in the bowling yeah. alley bathroom. That's old. <laughs> yes, like, <laughs> and clearly no one's used in years. Right. But right. it better be there. But I, I hear I, what you're saying. Not everyone who bowls is a scummy person. Right. But in the movies, they are. Yes. Like, you know, everybody you see is like, yeah, they, uh, they, pr I don't know. I, I don't want to like compartmentalize, you know, certain things, but it's like, yeah, it just seems like anytime there's a bowler or a bowling alley, yes. it's full of, it's full of people who, um, or just yeah, kind of scummy and scummy and or weirdos and yeah. and or schlubby. Yeah. 
It's just, <laughs> except maybe Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf was the only time like popular people went bowling. But even then, one was a werewolf. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I, I like so, it. I, I, I like that, huh? That's really so good. So what's, what's your huh? Um, where, where do I get those pancakes? <laughs> I know. How much batter was I required? know. Like, how, how did he do it? And I, I and I want one. I want to eat oh, yeah. one of those pancakes. Where okay. do I get one? Yeah, they're lar- like he was making pancakes for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> he had a snow shovel. That's my I know. that's my favorite part. He <laughs> served him with a snow shovel. It's like where did you get the pe- like how did you heat the metal to cook the pancakes? <laughs> that's a lot of bizquick. <laughs> it is. It, like there was a box of pancake bat of like pancake mix sitting there, but it's like good for you, Buck. Like mm-hmm. you 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 put the kids to bed and started decorating. Yeah, he was he up had all night. Streamers everywhere. Yeah, like it's like like uh, like Elf decorating the department yeah, store. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, those were those were large pancakes. But this time, I did notice like there's a gigantic pad of butter sitting yeah. on top. That's what. That's what I. I can make pancakes. I want to know where he got that. Where he got the butter? butter. <laughs> I'll take the pancake. You get the butter. We'll meet halfway. Just, yeah, I'm just curious where they came from. Yeah, I could. I could go to. I like a pancake. Yeah, we have me pancakes. Too. Every, we have pancakes every once in a while for dinner just because it's nice. cheap and easy. And yeah. Hey, like, bre- one night this week, it was like, let's just have pancakes. Breakfast pancakes for dinner is the eggs. best. I yeah. love breakfast food. It's rare. When I when I go to a restaurant that offers, you know, that still has their breakfast menu for dinner, I usually get breakfast food. I, I do, too. Love, a lot of times Love French toast. Love omelets. Mm, yeah. Yes. Breakfast food all day I'll, long. I like a skillet. That's good stuff, too. Yeah. Yeah. So... But, uh, but yeah, that was, that was, did you give your, huh? Not yet. Yes. Yeah. The, the pancakes. Oh, the pancakes. The that's, pancakes right. that's, yeah. that's why we're talking about it. So, uh, well that wraps up, um, Uncle Buck. What, what a do good, you have what next? a good movie that was. Yeah, Uncle it, Buck. Is, it is. Uh, I really enjoy it. What are you, what are you providing us with next yeah, week? Continuing with Candyland, John Candy movies. We're, go- we're going back just two years from Uncle Buck and also coincidence or not another John Hughes movie. We are going with planes, trains, and automobiles. Another just solid, solid movie, Oz. I I don't remember if I've seen this from beginning to end. Hmm. It's not one. I didn't grow up with this movie like I did Same. with, I with The Great Outdoors. Um, yeah, but, I, I think I have, but it would be like watching a new one again. Yeah. Yeah, it's. I mean, most John Hughes movies again are, are shot in and around, or take take place in and around the Chicago area. Mm-hmm. And this is one that definitely, you know, there's uh, there's some very local references, including um, my uh, my present town. Oh yeah, there's a couple scenes that, nice. that were shot literally about a half a mile from my present residence. Wow, mm-hmm. that considered with another movie that I know was shot pretty much entirely in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, didn't realize that uh, hometown was. I knew the one, but I didn't know this one. Yeah, yeah, this one. There's a couple. There's a couple shots. I'll point them out next week. Fun. Yeah. So, uh, so planes, trains, and automobiles for yeah. next week. Uh, social media wise, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We do have a Patreon link down below if you'd like to join the Patreon army. Um, I'm getting tired of only saying five names, so <laughs> be that sixth. Um, be that Alfon Seca. See if I... <laughs> the Alfon Seca. We need, we need to grow a sixth figure. That's right. Be that Alfon Seca. Um, but no, that's uh, wrap it up this week with Uncle Buck. And we will be back next week with Planes, Trains, and Automobiles for another episode of Let's Talk About Flicks. I'm Oz. I'm Curtis. And we'll see you guys then. Here's a quarter. <laughs>